You're listening to Graveyard Show Classic. 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 Good evening, friends of the undead. I am the Deacon of Darkness, the posthumous pimp. Freak Show! And I am the Diva of Dismemberment, Mistress of the Blade, June the Meat Cleaver, from the Bordello of Horror. You're getting your freak on with the caretaker on the Graveyard Show. Step into the graveyard with the caretaker at graveyardshow.com. That is graveyardshow.com. Podcast number 70, June 3rd, 2010. This is Lonnie Martin, the writer and director of Women's Studies. Hi there, this is Judith O'Day from the original Night of the Living Dead and soon to be released Women's Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, monsters and madmen, you are listening to The Graveyard Show. <laughs> To the graveyard. Enter the graveyard every Thursday night, midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific. And now, coming to you from Los Angeles, please welcome your host, the Caretaker. And welcome to another edition of the Graveyard Show podcast. I am your Caretaker, and the graveyard is open. What a great show I have for you tonight, as you heard at the top of the show. Director and writer of the film Women's Studies, Lonnie Martin, will be here. And what a surprise. What an honor. Not only a co-star of the film Women's Studies, but of course we all know her from the original Night of the Living Dead as Barbara. I'm talking about, of course, actress Judith O'Day will be here in the graveyard. I am thrilled to have her in here. It's uh, truly an honor, and uh, well, we are going to talk about women's studies, but maybe I can get her to talk a little bit about Night of the Living Dead. It's quite a show, so sit back, relax, and enjoy, and I will see you on the other side. Enjoy. Well, if you listen to the Graveyard Show podcast, you've heard quite a bit about a film called Women's Studies, which will be out on DVD coming out this Tuesday, June 7th. And I'm pleased to welcome back to the show writer and director of the film, Lonnie Martin. Lonnie, thanks for being back in the Graveyard. Caretaker, thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great having you back. So here we are. The film is really close to being uh, released on DVD. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, I'm very excited that people are finally going to get a chance to uh, see Women's Studies. Um, it's been kind of a long time coming for us. Uh, we're in our fourth year of, of working on it uh, on some level. of um, on some level. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited that people are really finally going to get the chance to see it. There's been like, a lot of build-up for us, and there's been a lot of build-up for people. I know we have a lot of kind of fans who have been sort of waiting to, to see it, so we're excited to finally give them that chance. Now, you mentioned four years. I mean, four years is a long time. I mean, you, you look at it and you think, you know, that's, that's like high school, you know, <laughs> that's, that's college time. You know, four years of, of dedicating your life to this film. Uh, tell everybody out there what that's like to, to really kind of stay the course with something like this and really just kind of just being behind it 100% all the time. It, yeah, well, it certainly takes a level of, of commitment, and it takes a level, you have to believe in what you're doing. Um, when I was first starting out making films, I met a filmmaker who uh, was at a premiere uh, for a filmmaker, and he had finished his first feature, and it was a really, really pretty, pretty good feature, and uh, during the Q&A, he, you know, someone asked him how long he'd been working on it, and he said, three and a half years. And I said, no way, there's no way it takes that long, three and a half years. And now here in my fourth year, the movie is finally being released on DVD. I sort of I get it, you know, I really, I, I got it a couple years ago. I was like, wow, he, he was right, um, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just really a level of commitment. And it is sort of, it, it's sticking to it and it's, um, 
you know, I've never thought of myself as a patient person or necessarily, but it's a certain level. There's a lot of patience. There's a lot of just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to try to do the right thing. And some of the waiting, you know, we did on purpose. And some of the waiting, you know, was thrust upon, uh, you know, Cindy Marie Martin, my wife and co-producer and I. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, in retrospect, I, I you know, maybe I, I should, shouldn't have done it any other way it's uh it's i'm glad it's sort of uh i'm sort of glad it's happened the way it has i've learned a whole lot now for those that are listening and and are just for the first time hearing about what uh hearing about women's studies why don't you tell everybody out there what the premise of the film is about the film is about a uh, grad student and her friends who become guests uh as you uh, so to speak trapped really at a women's academy um, that is uh, run by uh, feminists who, very extreme feminists, who believe uh, murder, make murder part of their dogma. And so these homicidal feminists uh, try to indoctrinate uh, members, this girl, this woman and her friends, uh, as well as uh, as well as doing bad things to the male member of their party. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and it, you, you bring about two opposing points of view, uh, one brought by the protagonist, one brought by the antagonist, uh, certainly strong women on both sides. Was it important for you to, to do that with this particular film, having the, the, you know, having both sides really pushing against each other in their beliefs? Yeah, uh, it, it was. What I really wanted to show was less sort of, you know, this this strain of feminism believes this and this sort of wave of feminism believes this. I want to do less of that than really show that the, the people who are killing and the people who aren't, what they believe is not necessarily all that different. Uh, the difference is how they're going about acting upon their beliefs. And I think that uh, to me, uh, that's what I saw a lot going on in the world at the time I, I wrote the film. You know, it, just, it seems to me that there was um, that that there were people who who believed in something. You know, be it uh, let's go ahead and use the example of um, let's go ahead and use Israel and Palestine. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there there were there were there were Palestinians who who you know have very valid points about encroachment of Israel in the Gaza Strip, and and I mean there's there's layers of of issues with that. Uh, with Israel and Palestine, but it's it's a valid it's a valid um, concern. Their concerns about about um, how, how to properly divide the land are, are 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 very valid. And yet there are certain groups of Palestinians who go and you know strap bombs themselves, walk in at nightclubs, and blow up people for that very cause. And some people say, well, because they're using violence, it delegitimizes the cause. But I mean, it's the same on the other side. You know, Israel just recently launched a bunch of, uh, or they just recently attacked that aid ship that came in, and it's. It's sort of like, well, you know, we understand that you are, there's a struggle for survival, you know, for your country, but at the same time, you have to think about how you're acting upon that struggle. So to me, it's not, it's, it's the idea that, you know, these people who are acting violently towards a belief, that they shouldn't have to, they shouldn't delegitimize the, the, the political belief or the religious belief. Um, I, I, instead of using, you know, religion, I used feminism mm-hmm. uh, because feminism is historically largely nonviolent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you take even the most radical feminist is nonviolent. So even so, you take this sort of traditionally nonviolent uh, ideal, and you add violence to it. And it's sort of it. I think it's. I think it works as a good satire that way. Was it? And I think we talked about this the last time when you were on the show. Was it hard writing for women being a guy? It is, uh, <laughs> it is, it isn't, and this, I don't know what this says about me. I feel sometimes when I'm writing with women, with female characters, I can be more emotionally honest than I can be uh, writing as, writing male characters. And I don't know if that's just a cultural thing, you know, the whole macho guy thing or whatever. I don't know if, if, if you know, what that necessarily comes from, but I, uh, you know, I enjoy writing for women. I, I try, you know, I... I like to think that I write pretty good roles for women and that they're roles that women can um, think they're deep into. The actors may feel completely differently about that, but uh, well, they seem to really, you know, feel good about the roles. Um, but it, it's, it's, I don't know, you write roles for people. I mean, men and women, you know, there are, there are differences between men and women, but yet we all, we kind of all have the same emotions. We all sort of have the same, uh, you know, we're all, we're all human. 
So I think that it's, it's, it's you know, you try to make it about people, not men, not women, not people of a certain color, people of a certain, you know, religion, but just make it about humans. Mm-hmm. And and was it hard uh, to uh, to not make it sound preachy when you had these sort of uh, philosophical debates going on, especially early on when the uh, when our heroes are having, uh, I think it was a dinner, where they're in the cafeteria with the uh, with our uh, with our antagonists. Was it hard to just try not to really kind of go too over the top with it? Did you find yourself pulling back? Um, yeah, the first, there were drafts of the, it's funny, we, we have a special feature from the DVD that sort of confronts, it talks about a little bit of the ideas and the themes that we talked about and, and the difficulty we had of, of, of trying to walk a line and not be too preachy and, uh, but it was, it was difficult because I, I went through a period sort of feeling like I really needed to, I didn't want it to be perceived as anti-feminist. I really need to put all these ideas about positive feminist ideas in it. And so there were certain drafts of the script that got really preachy and they got really thick with dialogue. And, uh, and we shot some of that too. Um, we, did a, we did an early cut in 2008, sort of a longer cut that had a lot more of that. And it did, it bogged the film down a little bit. And then um, the cut that's being released, you know, we went back and sort of did a re-edit and, and pulled some of that, you know, made it... Uh, they were, they were they were good ideas, but it it wasn't moving the story forward. It was interesting sort of philosophical discussion, mm-hmm. but it wasn't really moving the story the story forward properly. So we sort of pulled that stuff out, and they're in the deleted scenes now, so people can see that. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, you, you don't want it to be a polemic. You don't want to just you don't want to be just telling people about feminism and telling people about extremism is bad. You don't want to be no you know no. It's it has to be something that is is there for the taking if people want to take it, yeah. and if you just want to kind of be spun away with the story. Sure. Can. So, Lonnie, we did the women's studies contest here in the Graveyard Show. Uh, listeners could go to uh, Helena's YouTube site, watch her uh, auditioning for Mr. Kruger video. And they had to answer a trivia question based on that video. We have a winner. Who is the winner of the Women's Studies DVD goodie pack? Hang on. Let me, let me get the piece of paper from Helena. Helena, do you have the piece of paper with the winner? <laughs> just, uh, give me that piece of paper in your hand. Just give it to me. Okay. Just, uh, hang, uh, hang, uh, oh. hang, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, okay. The winner of the Women's Studies contest is... Um, Nate from Michigan. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Nate is one of the longtime listeners of the program. Oh, that's awesome. So what what is Nate wins the DVD of Women's Studies and a goodie pack? What's what's coming in the goodie pack? Oh, uh, in the goodie pack he gets a women's studies backpack slash cooler. Uh, he also gets a signed T shirt. Uh, a T shirt uh, with Women's Studies logo signed by um the nine major cast and crew members, including Judith O'Day. Um, he gets oh, there's a couple other goodies. There's a, there's a pin. There's a, a women's study stress ball. There's a, there's a couple other things in awesome. there, too. Oh, uh, that's great. You know? Well, Nate, congratulations. That's awesome. Oh, and uh, a copy of the movie. And a copy of the movie. Uh, of course. Of course, he's, right. of course, the copy of the movie. That's what we were promoting, definitely. <laughs> so congratulations, Nate, on winning your copy of uh, Women's Studies on DVD and the goodie pack. Now, um, in, in the previous, uh, previous time you were on the program, we talked about how uh, Cindy got the role uh, as, as the lead in the film. You were able to get one of the... Uh, well-known names in horror, uh, Judith O'Day from the original Night of the Living Dead uh, in the film. How did that come about? Um, it, well, I don't know, I'm a huge, huge fan of Night of the Living Dead. It is my favorite horror film by far. I just it, it sums up everything that a good, for me, what a good horror film does. And um, we had this role of the senator. It was a small role, and we decided let's go try and get a name, a horror name, to uh, to come and, and, and be in it. And um, I had recently seen a film called October Moon that she had done with uh, Jason Paul Collum. It's a uh, directed by Jason Paul Collum, excuse me. Um, and it, uh, she had a supporting role in that. Uh, it's a gay themed horror film. It's pretty good. 
And I was struck by kind of, wow, there she is. That's Judith O'Day. Where has she been for 40 years, you know? And uh, she was just pretty good in the film. And I was like, wow, she she might be. Let's, let's, let's contact her, you know? So we sort of put her, she was sort of at the top of a, of a short list of people we were going to try to contact. And um, I don't even remember how we did it. So we dug up her agent's info somehow, or her manager's info somehow, and contacted him. And he sent her the script and through him. You know, she, she she liked the script, and we spoke with her, and she uh, she she decided to come on the project, which we were really really excited by. So, do you feel that it gave your film validity to have somebody like Judith in it? Um. Yeah. I mean, on a certain level, I mean, you. It was uh, a lot of filmmakers do that. It's sort of let's find the, the low budget. And, you know, let's 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 find this name and, and put it in our low budget film um, to sort of to, to add a bit of validity. Um, we wanted some of that. We felt like we were. Uh, well, I thought she just she'd be good to the role, good for the role, and be a hoot to work with. And um, because she she sort of had a great she has a great love for independent films. She has a great love for. Uh, low budget film yeah. that it, it, it did seem a right fit. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're sort of looking to, to draw in, uh, attract people. Um, you know, with the title like women's studies, it, your typical horror fan doesn't go, well, let me, let me just grab this off the shelf, you know? Uh, so with, with, you know, Judith O'Day, who's a very recognizable sort of, um, personality in the, in the horror world, I felt like people would go, Oh, okay, well there is, this is part of our world. Um, and uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we, we get some, we get some zombie fans who who check the film out. Yeah, uh, what was it like the first time she came on the set? I mean, that must have been pretty exciting, I would think. It was pretty exciting. Uh, it was it was great. She actually came at a point in the shoot. We the, the previous shoot that we had had before that had been. It wasn't a disaster, but it had gone, not gone well at all. Uh, it was a very difficult shoot that a lot had gone wrong during and um it was it was right there sort of in the middle and everybody it was it was a real down everybody kind of came off it pretty down and she brought she re-energized us for the last half of the production schedule um she just came in she was she brought a, a level of professionalism that was just um was so refreshing I think at that point to be around it was so uh, it was so it invigorated the, the crew a lot and she but she brought also just uh, the love for it you know she came in fresh she was she hadn't been struggling at it for a few months at this point she came in like really fresh and brought fresh energy mm-hmm. and you know she was the uh, oldest person I think that worked on the movie and so it's very it's it's sort of very ironic and funny that she brought a very youthful and um and vibrant energy to the shoot at the time we really really needed it Mm -hmm. it uh it was but yeah it was great i mean it was it was really really exciting and and it was it was good for everybody it was good for me i um i met her night before we shot the first time we went out to dinner and i remember that I, i ordered a martini a very sort of involved martini and she uh she ordered the same thing and we sort of bonded over these martinis and it sort of really broke the ice and she's very she's very easy to talk to she's very um pleasant to be around i mean she's just really really open and it's it's just it was i mean i was i was nervous but like she just melts away your nerves i mean she's she she immediately puts you at ease Speaking of Judith O'Day, who do you think we have on the other line right now? But Judith O'Day herself, Miss O'Day, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here in the Graveyard Show. I really appreciate it. Oh, it is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, you came in at a good time because uh, Lonnie and I were just talking about how the two of you uh, met the night before uh, your first day on set and you bonded over martinis. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, so, I don't know if we want to admit that to the world. <laughs> so, um, Lonnie and I have been talking about the film. We've been talking about the characters. Um, f- for you, uh, wh- why don't you tell everybody out there you, the character that you play in the film Women's Studies? I play Senator Gail Hamlin. She is a feminist right to the core, and that. She, she's really a very powerful woman 
when I describe it to other people, I, I tell them, just think of Hillary Clinton, and that, that pretty well wraps it up. <laughs> Although I don't think Hillary would quite get into the role the way Gail did. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got the script, what did you think? I mean, here, here's this, I mean, it's a very, you know, it's a very strong, a, a, a social horror movie. It's something that you really don't find very much of anymore. So what were your you thoughts know, when you were reading this? I, I was pleasantly surprised. I was excited by the thought that this had substance to it. I, I guess I, w- I was a bit, uh, oh my gosh, look at all the blood, because I'm, I'm <laughs> that's that's a little tough for me. But uh, I think the story Lonnie was telling or has told is uh, fascinating, and I was very grateful to be a part of it. I think uh, it's worth telling. So, Lonnie, um, so the two of you have, uh, you know, adult beverages the night before, you know, the, the first day on set for, for Miss O'Day. And as you mentioned earlier, Night of the Living Dead was is one of your favorites, if not your favorite film, horror film. W- did it ever occur to you, like, while you're doing this, like, oh, my God, like, I- I'm directing, you know, Judith O'Day in this scene? Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, I mean, it, oh, it did. It, 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 it hit me a couple of times. I was like, oh, forget it's Barbara. It's Barbara, and she's, she's, she's so great, you know. But uh, it, um, it, it was it was also very different from Barbara in a way. And uh, again, it was sort of, you know, as I kind of said before, I mean, she just really put everybody at ease. It was really, um, there was, she came in and just, it was like, she fit right in. We were, we were kind of, we were a motley crew. Mm-hmm. And she just came and fit right in, and, and she was, you know, uh, she was falling down without a mat, and she was, you know, we we had the limited resources, and it didn't, it just didn't, it didn't phase her in in the least. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I mean, there there was that sense of of you know, of Barbara's one of these iconic characters, and and, mm-hmm. and 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 she is, you know, Judith O'Day is Barbara. So there was that sense that I I, I am sort of here with this this yeah. person who who represents this this icon, and um. But uh, again, you know, Judy, you were so down to earth. I, I, it was it was easy to, it was easy to forget that you you played this iconic character. <laughs> well, if I could jump in for half a second, sure. We were making a movie. It was exciting. The story was exciting. We're production people and actors. Uh, that I I was Barbara. Sure, that I imagine that that might make. Some people sort of stop and say, oh, my gosh. But when you come right down to it, we were people who love film, trying to make the best film we could with, as Lonnie said, limited resources. Uh, and that, that's really what happens when you start rolling. It's people trying to make it work, mm-hmm. believable, and, and that's what we did. I. I hope everybody felt the same way. You have such a powerful scene towards the end of the film, and I don't want to give it away for the listeners out there so they go see this movie, but you have a very, very powerful scene at the end. It's very, I mean, was it one of those moments for you that was it an actor's dream to have like this much emotion in in a film, let alone even a horror movie, was was it one of those scenes that you just saw it, read it, and went, "Oh, I can't wait to get to this point." <laughs> I think scenes like that are, are sort of scary. I, they're intimidating, at least to me, mm-hmm. because they are so powerful. You don't want to overdo it. You want to capture the the level of emotion that makes the scene work. That that sometimes is just the greatest challenge in the world. Uh, in fact, I think Lonnie will attest to the fact that after we finished shooting, I'd say, well, is, is that really what you wanted? It, it, was it all right? Was, was it over the top? Do we need to do it again? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, I remember I remember that, and I remember as well that it, the scene itself, the characters, both uh, the senator, both Senator Hamlin and both uh, the scene with Cindy, with Cindy Martin, who plays the lead character of Mary, 
they have a great it's a very large arc they they have it's a very large emotional journey they have to make in a very short period of time mm-hmm. and i think a lot of the concern correct me if i'm wrong Judith, but i believe a lot of the concern was just the fact that they had to make this sort of huge emotional arc oh and i guess when people see the, the movie they'll, they'll understand a little better but i think as an actor it's probably tough to uh it's, it's tough to do if if if, if you're you know it's, it, it can be tough to do well, you're you're right in the moment. You're as an actor, you are. You cannot be objective. You're you're living the moment. You can only rely and trust in the the director, who can see that art properly building from behind the camera, and ho- hopefully it builds the way he wants it or she wants it, mm-hmm. and that is best for the story. Mm-hmm. Is it one of those things, Miss O'Day, as being an actor? Um, in you know, I think nowadays people look at horror movies and they go, "Oh, you know, it's like a throwaway." Can you discuss uh, being an actress? You know, doing a role in a horror movie. I mean, is it really any different than doing a drama or or a comedy, say for you know just a few little differences? Interesting question. I don't think it is. For me. Any role, whether it's in a musical comedy, a horror movie, a a, a drama, the most important thing is to make it believable. Uh, Even if it's way out science fiction, the audience still has to be taken in by it. They have to be able to let go of that, um, what do they call it, the something of disbelief. Uh, they they have to think that even though this is way out, I'm still here and I'm still involved and I still want to see what happens. Mm-hmm. So no, I really, I really think whatever kind of of script you're doing, it the essence is you want to be true to the character. You want the audience to feel that they can accept oftentimes the unacceptable, mm-hmm. especially in horror. Sure. Lonnie, um, you have recently released on YouTube some uh, uh, prequel footage to women's studies. Uh, why, was it, why, why was it cut out of the film to begin with? Uh, that scene, that was the original opening to the scene, uh, to the movie. And uh, we felt it really set the wrong tone. It's a very, um, it's a very raw, you know, there, there's a lot of raw language and there's a lot of raw sexuality and there's a lot of raw violence in it. And it's very raw. And, it, and it's, it's, it's the sort of open, it's, it's designed to sort of set up the, uh, certain elements of the film, all, all these women wear, uh, at this school wear a tattoo. It's designed to set up that. It's designed to establish this this uh, strip club that we, we come back to later. It's sort of designed to, it's designed to sort of grab the audience, but we felt once we, you know, we felt it grabbed the audience in a wrong way. It's a very, it's a thoughtful, it's a very thoughtful film in some ways. And uh, it, it does have its very visceral movement moments, and it does, it does have many of those horror elements, but it's also it's I'm, I'm a big I like a slow build I like a mm-hmm. slow sort of thriller type build in my horror films, mm-hmm. and I think it left people people I think people saw that and thought they were going to get a real visceral gory film and then they sort of was a little bit of a letdown to uh, to kind of return to that slow build. So we just the way we kind of shifted it was shifted into a way where it's sort of the slow build from the beginning. We do a kind of a little. Now we, we sort of open with a little moment from the end of the movie, mm-hmm. and then we sort of take the audience uh, on a journey to show them how we got there. Okay. Miss O'Day. May, may I jump, may oh, I yes, jump please. Oh, please, yes. Because I, I have not seen the, the new cut. I'm excited to do that. I remember distinctly being shocked at the opening. I, I I think I even had the opportunity to talk to you about that and say something to you about it, Lonnie, that it it was so graphic that it really almost took your, your breath away. It, it, that kind of violence can be very exhausting. Now, I'm interested now so much so to see how you've opened, because I, I think that was a wise move on your part. 
Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I feel it was the right move. Uh, I can't. I, I'm sorry. I haven't sent you a copy yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bad okay, director. I have you. I have you on tape. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bad director. Watch, watch, watch How your could you? T- watch your mailbox <laughs> exactly. here in the next week or so. <laughs> <laughs> How could right. you not send her a copy on it? <laughs> Ms. O'Day, um, I want to ask you this. Um, how has a uh, women's role changed from the 60s to today, would you say? How, how have you seen it evolve? Oh, wow. Great question. Stronger characters. Richer, deeper characters. People are, uh, writers are taking more risks with women now. Women have more to say now. I think that is tremendously exciting. I also think that older women are having, uh, uh, they're playing greater roles now. They're having greater opportunities. Uh, Once you pass 40, life doesn't end. It only gets better. And to be able to capture that in wonderful characters on the screen nowadays is a a very exciting thing that I think has happened since the 60s. That is a great answer. What a thrill it's ha- it's been having you uh, on the show, Miss O'Day. I really appreciate you taking the time. Lonnie, uh, as always, thank you for, for coming in again. Uh, I'm going to let the lady have the last word on this one. Uh, <laughs> Women's <laughs> Studies. By all means. <laughs> exactly. Women's Studies comes out on DVD Tuesday, June 7th. Please go out, check it out. Support independent films. Um, Lonnie, Miss O'Day, thank you so much for being here in the graveyard. Here is a pleasure. And as I put all of those interviews to rest, I want to thank writer and director Lonnie Martin, actress Judith O'Day, and uh, congratulations to Nate in Michigan, one of uh, the longtime listeners of the show. And uh, Nate, I hope you enjoy the DVD. Thanks for uh, uh, entering the contest, and uh, it will be in your hands before you know it. So congratulations, my friend. And um, as I begin to close down the graveyard, just a quick reminder that tomorrow, June 4th, will be the first uh, fan chat on 100 Years of Monster Movies. Uh, That will be with Ms. Monster and her melons. And uh, if you want to hear them on the program, well, they were here last week. And um, it was quite a show, to say the least. So... Uh, I invite you to go back to podcast number 69 to uh, hear me interview Ms. Monster and her monster melons, Tit and Tat. Uh, We'll talk about, uh, of course, what's coming up tomorrow. And uh, we'll get a little bit of uh, insight as to their relationship, how they they all met, and uh, their website and all kinds of fun stuff. So check that out. Again, that's 100 Years of Monster Movies. That's uh, 100... YMM.com. That's where you can go uh, tomorrow on the 4th, 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, the theme is Flying Monsters. And of course, I'll remind you about next week when uh, Dr. Ivan Kryptosis will be hosting uh, next week on uh, 100 Years of Monster Movies website. Also, qu- uh, a couple of quick reminders uh, A Nightmare to Remember, which is the uh, film festival going on in San Francisco by Last Doorway Productions, our friend Miss Misery. That's going to be going on in San Francisco on Saturday, June 26th. You can go to anightmare2remember.com for details. Um, among, um, uh, among other things going on there, yours truly is being honored. Unfortunately, I cannot make it, uh, but I'm going to um, have uh, maybe a little video thank you uh, that I'll send up there. Uh, in lieu of my absence. But um, I'm really honored to be receiving an award uh, from Raina and uh, John up at Last Story Productions. They put on great stuff. They really work hard, and they're really trying to get the horror community together in the Bay Area. So go support them. And if you live in L.A. or if you live in Sacramento, uh, you know, or uh, anywhere in between, you know, you're a fan of horror, go check it out. Get up there. Go support them. 
And in July, the Viscera Film Festival, which of course is run by our friend Shannon Lark over at uh, the Chainsaw Mafia dot com website uh, that is going to be happening here in LA I believe it's July 17th and as I get details um, from Shannon I will pass them along to you as well and uh, I will have Shannon on the show to talk about uh, Viscera as well and if you haven't seen any of the films from Viscera and you live in LA you gotta go check them out and if you don't live in L.A., you've got to go to the ChainsawMafia.com uh, to uh, get the DVD. I, I, uh, I did get my DVD because I'm one of the uh, sponsors. The Graveyard Show is one of the sponsors of the event. Uh, I did receive my DVD not too long ago. And i got to tell you, from top to bottom, it is great, great films, great stuff. Lots of talented people out there. Um, Mainly, of course, it's, it's women uh, either producing, directing, both, writing. It's mainly women filmmakers. Um, so great work, great stuff. And uh, if, you, if you missed my interview with Shannon in January uh, with Shannon Lark and Stacy Ponder, they have films in there as well. Stacy's film is uh, Taste of Flesh, Taste of Fear, which is actually done with Barbie dolls. It's, it's hilarious. It's great. And then uh, she shot a film that Shannon directed and starred in called Lipstick. What is Lipstick, you ask? Well, let me remind you what Lipstick is about. I'll just go and write a script about a woman who's a chronic masturbator. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. What if, like, she's a chronic masturbator, but she believes her vagina speaks to her? Like, this like, (laughs) vagina lot of thing and it just totally made sense i'm it sorry did you just say did you just say that what if she thought her vagina spoke to her yeah like what if she's so obsessed with her vagina like what came uh-huh. before like the chicken or the egg like was yeah. it the masturbation or uh-huh. the vagina speaking to her like uh-huh. which one came first you know uh-huh. i'm kind of thinking that maybe her obsession with her private areas actually led her to believe that her vagina speaks to her oh. but maybe her vagina does speak to her you know uh-huh. you never know so this whole product is that would, not that'd like, be a, that'd hello, be a, Betsy, like, are you going to be touching me today? Like, it's not like that. Yeah. I was going to say, that, that could be an interesting casting session. <laughs> oh, I know, right? So, um, very hands-on. Uh, you know? Yeah, but I'm bumps. And there you have it. I, I sent Shannon an email letting her know how uh, great I thought everything uh, was from the Viscera Film Festival, and... Uh, I really, really support women in horror as well as all of our friends in the world of independent horror just in general. So uh, go check it out. It, it's, it's, if, you can, if, you, if you can take the time, if you got the cash, I know times are tough right now, but if you can support the Viscera Film Festival, I really highly recommend it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Speaking of uh, supporting independent films and women in horror, The Graveyard Show is a proud sponsor of independent horror. And uh, we encourage you to let us know about an event that's going on that you may be producing, putting on, a film that maybe you're writing, directing, anything that's going on out there in the world of independent horror. If you maybe have heard something that's going on, let us know. Drop us a line. Graveyardshow at gmail.com is the email address. Graveyardshow at gmail.com. Also, we've uh, had bands on in the past. Um... If you are in a band, if you're a musician, you want your music featured on the program, uh, if you check out our website, graveyardshow.com, you'll see all the details as to what you need to do as far as getting us your music. And as always, as you exit the graveyard, I would like to remind you to please lock the gate behind you. We wouldn't want anyone to get out. Until next time. course i want to comment on the sad passing of actor dennis hopper who passed away last week at the age of 74 certainly there's nothing that i can say that hasn't already been said but i'm going to say it anyway he is one of the greatest actors in american history if not in the history of cinema period he uh he was a very talented filmmaker and someone who left his mark on the art form
and certainly in the genre that we talk about week in and week out, he has certainly left his mark here as well. So I just wanted to send thoughts and prayers to the Hopper family. And I just want to encourage everybody out there to celebrate the life, the talent, and the legacy of the man that is Dennis Hopper.